Hey everybody, it is Saturday. I just finished watching, well, collectively about an hour ago, we finished watching the Warhammer uh, reveal show of, what is it called? Uh, the Dead and the Divine. And so what we're gonna do is talk about that today. Now, I do wanna throw something quick out there just while people are still piling in. I see that uh, the numbers are still going up. Uh, but I wanted to show off something that was uh, just sent to me and we're gonna be doing a giveaway. And if you know the channel, I've only done like two giveaways this entire time I've been YouTubing <laughs> and that's like not good. Um, the awesome guys at Tinker Turf sent me a whole bunch of terrain and so we're going to be giving them away on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. And um, yeah, I'll talk about it. I'll have a video coming out this week with more detail on it, but they sent this to me and I was like, you know, this is incredible. Like it's very thoughtful for my audience. Uh, it's incredible industrial starter terrain and it pairs perfectly with uh, some awesome stuff they have going on with a Kickstarter right now for uh, new designs and that kind of thing. Um, I think it'll blow your mind. It's actually like a curved satellite. It's freaking wild looking. Um, so go check them out. I put their description in the link below, but pretty much uh, a lot of the content this week is gonna be sponsored by the folks over at Tinker Turf because I really want them to succeed just like I want all the small businesses that make our hobby possible because they are small even games workshops kind of small um make it possible so go support these guys it would honestly mean the world to me and like i said this is just my little plug while uh while people are pouring in you're going to see me building stuff like this throughout the week and i think you're going to dig it so i see that the chat is already pumping we got 67 viewers okay i think we're ready to start digging in all right so we had an immense amount of information drop on us today. Um, I'm just gonna give my high level thoughts and I promise I am going to, to read all the article parts because uh, as always, I always get comments on these videos from people who are like truckers or drivers, that kind of stuff. People who just can't stop or pull over and read everything. So we'll do that and uh, let me get my chat adjusted here so I can see it. And what I wanna do uh, if you're new to, to how I do, um, Jack Henry, we just need 320 more. Legalize it. Yes, I'm on board. Um, so what we're going to do is basically go topic by topic that they went through. And we're just going to pause really briefly. And I want to hear you guys' thoughts. And that's kind of the whole point of this show, honestly, is just excuses to hang out and interact with one another. So um, like I said, I'm going to read the article and then I'll say pause flood your questions. I'm going to invite you to ask questions or give thoughts while I'm giving mine and that way the delay won't seem so ridiculous and then your thoughts will be ready for me to read the second I'm done with mine. Back and forth like a conversation. We got this down to a science gang. <laughs> I'm going to briefly touch on the the 40k and kill team stuff just because they are games that interest me. Honestly the kill team thing more so than the 40k. Bat Doug, yes, that's me. Vigilante. <laughs> uh, Michael says, thanks, Doug. The truckers appreciate it. Hauling busted concrete this cold morning. Oh, buddy. Well, stay warm. Get yourself some coffee and, and settle in. So the first thing we have, and I did not turn down the volume, is essentially this incredible cinematic, cinematic of a new Sisters of Battle unit, which is... It's... <laughs> I watched it live this morning and he was like, it's something that we haven't really seen for the sisters. And I'm like, it's it's the Grey Knight and the Baby Bjorn. It's just as what it is. It's just a little little mini Baby Bjorn um, to carry your sister of battle. It's cool. Uh, one of the things they pointed out was that it, it will be possible to run a full army of these and penitent engines. Now, obviously, I don't know if that's a good army or if it's... There's a lot of rules interactions, but because of the nature of how 40k list building works, you could. And you know what? You probably should. <laughs> um, and honestly, I think, yeah, that was actually it for 40k, which uh, I'm not going to lie. I was there watching the live Twitch stream. There were some salty dogs. So uh, let me tell you, ask you this. Um, we might just kind of group the 40k ones together, quite frankly, because there's so little. Um, which I'm okay with. I'm here for. <laughs> uh, so we'll do that. And we'll move down to the kill team thing, which I do think uh, interests me far more. And essentially the kill team, it's it's like an expansion box um, where it comes with, let's see if they have a good picture of the board. There's the models. Here we go. So it is styled 
like the Kill Team Arena boards, where it's a flat gaming board surface, but I, I was looking at it this morning and I was like, the problems that I have with Kill Team as far as too many, too many negative modifiers, I wonder, I've never played in the arena format. So I'm thinking, what if that kind of reigns in some of my, my problems with it? And so I, I'm actually very interested to try. I actually have a buddy uh, locally who has Kill Team Arena, the expansion. And so, I don't know, I, I just uh, want, want to try it that way, see if it helps the game at all. Uh, but this box set includes Space Marine Captain in Gravis armor. So if you are someone who wants a Gravis themed thing, you can do that. There is the Necro Necron Chronomancer, which, you know, y'all, I'm not like a Necron guy, but that guy is sick looking. Um, he's got these like flowing like metal tendrils coming out of them. Um, I love, one thing I do like about the Necrons is their, their idea of, science so complicated that it just looks like magic but it's technically not like that idea in a world where there is actually magic is pretty baller um now one thing that i asked in the chat on the twitch chat that never got answered for me was if you have to have kill team arena to play this like does the kill team pariah nexus book include any addendum rules that arena made and so if you know the answer Throw it in the chat, but uh, yeah. And these are units that people have been waiting on. They went on Flayed Ones and the Intercessors and uh, Xenos Terrain, Necron Terrain, awesome. That actually look really cool with like uh, Warhammer Quest and stuff too. Uh, let's see. Anyway, I'm gonna pause here. Um, yeah, I, honestly, I don't know anything about Titanicus. Hey guys, they made this model. It's almost the size of a 40k imperial knight that's that is the extent of my titanicus knowledge so i'm just going to lump all the 40k stuff together uh and ask the chat what do you guys think any of you have any interest in this kind of 40k content for me uh kill team is by far the most interesting but even even with that said uh i don't know i the fact that i couldn't get a solid answer on whether i need to buy another expansion to make this expansion work was weird, but I'm willing to try the uh, the game style. Steven likes big robots. You got it, buddy. I like it quite a bit. It, it's it's cool as heck. Like I mean, it's one of those models. Um, it was it was described on the the 40k podcast, the independent characters, which I love, and they were talking about how yeah, it might just sound like an imperial knight that's smaller, but but the truth is the way that they have minimized or shrunk down the amount of detail that's in an Imperial Knight model, for example, is incredible. And so, yeah. Uh, Doug, do a Necrons lore video for us, please. Hey, we'll throw it out there. If anybody else wants it, let me know. I'll make it happen. Honestly, uh, I kind of stopped doing 40K stuff and I asked them to stop sending me codexes because uh, those videos did terrible. Like, I enjoyed them, but... Uh, yeah, people just weren't watching them. So it is what it is. Anyway, uh, we're going to scroll down. This guy is looking good. The Ripley suits are awesome. Oh, that's a great name for them, Animus. These things, the Ripley suits, where are they at? Oh, they're at the top. Yeah. Yes. Anyway. Tough Fudge Cookie says F. Is my stream having problems? No? Okay. I don't know if that was like an F because uh, the stream died or something. <laughs> I'm always paranoid about that now. Okay. We're going to move right on because, I, like I said, I don't, I don't know much of anything about um, Titanicus as a game system. I just know the models are big and stompy and cool. So, the most important question within the Mortal Realms as we transition to Age of Sigmar stuff. What does the fox say um and in this example i'm gonna go with the sound of an arrow leaving the bow like a that's what a fox says we have here um basically if you're if you're not familiar with how the lumineth work there is the core society of lumineth which we've seen the models for uh in terms of like spearmen and the cavalry unit that we have right now that's already out on horseback and then there are disciplines where certain Lumineth will go and study at the foot of mountains to 
uh, you know, learn the secrets of stability and strength. And that's where we got the, the bull aesthetic guys with the rock hammers and all these kinds of crazy things. <laughs> Jack Estens, when have you cared about people not watching? Hey now, hey now, shots fired. <laughs> <laughs> when have you cared about people thinking your jokes aren't funny hey -o! anyway so we got this uh and what we're now transitioning to is the aspect of the wind rather than the mountain and so the things that we're seeing are all about being light and um kind of moving with the air and i don't know just speed and intensity is kind of what i'm thinking which is a perfect counterpoint to the more solid you know rock foundation type stuff so we have him. He's the big reveal, to be honest with you. Um, and then he shows off. I'm gonna. This is this one big picture. Yes. Okay. Good. Uh, let's see. Silhouette looks very similar to his Drumcast model. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, one of the things I want to point out here that I really like is that the the quiver and the bow itself are extremely reminiscent of the old high elf um bolt thrower uh, i was thinking about that and so did uh warhammer weekly tom we were talking about that just the, the way that they subtly pick items and kind of pay homage to uh high elves of yore i like him quite a bit i'll be honest with you this uh this like sect this uh, micro bit of the lumineth appeals to me far more than the alarith the, the rock guys um, but I like it. They just look dodgy. They look tricksy. Yeah, the quiver is amazing. I don't envy anybody who has to paint every single one of those arrows. <laughs> but but you guys can do it, and I'm sure it's going to be great. I like it quite a bit. So that's him. I did ask... I asked a bunch of questions during the Twitch thing, and none of them got answered, to be honest with you. Because um, I asked about his base size, because for one... I want a size comparison, but two, you can definitely see that his swirly thing exceeds the width of his base. And so I'm trying to get a sense of like how big is the base and therefore how big is the swirly dues, that kind of stuff. But uh, I couldn't, I couldn't get an answer. But yeah, so I'm excited. So I'm going to pause here. Actually, let me just go back to the article. We'll get to the Broken Realms Techless here in a hot second, but I'm going to leave it on these pictures here and open it up. Guys and gals, of course. Uh, throw in your thoughts in the chat. I'm gonna wax poetically for a hot second to fill the delay time <laughs> until they get to me. Um, let's see, we have, uh, there's a lot of stuff as silhouettes, like Bolt Thrower, Swordmaster Guardians, Banner Guy. Absolutely, yes, the hero was full of cool things. Uh, Wargamer Willie, thank you so much, buddy. Gigantic Fox, my dreams came true. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know why we didn't have that. That's like a, I feel like we should have had more Fox things in the old world. <laughs> so let's see here we have you moved to indiana nope iowa uh any idea if you would ever get together with fans to meet at a gw shop uh oh absolutely absolutely mb oh sorry so, so something on my bookshelf kind of fell behind me and i was like what um mb yeah if you reach out to me on preferably instagram honestly is kind of my favorite platform uh but also our discord in the show notes below uh, and you let me know, like, I'm excited for when things kick back up again in the Midwest to get around and, and play with everybody out here, because quite frankly, travel's so easy. It's boring, but it's easy. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see. I think the base size will be similar to the mountain cow. See, that's, that's interesting, because I was thinking that too, like, this is, this is clearly the the mountain cow equivalent right you have the troops in the form of the kangaroo riders and uh, which we talked about before and then this could be like your big you know monster centerpiece avatar of that spirit type thing but if he was that big like the base was that big and then the swirly things came out even wider than that that's a huge dude like yeah i don't know i mean that's i mean it's a lot of weight way up top, if that's true, because all the all the real plastics up here. So I'm kind of curious. Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jack says that's how I met Doug. Yeah, just asked me to meet at a game store, and boom, he's stuck with me for life now. Can't get out of it. Uh, I really like it. Yeah, Willie, it's awesome. I, I love it. 
let's see. Seem to have forgotten to show the monkey magic cloud riders. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, let's see, okay. So I think uh, Adam's looking forward to Lumineth, yeah. I don't think they had any pictures of the kangaroo troops here, but those were already spoiled. We already went through those, so I don't have to do that. Uh, Warren asks, which character do you want to see GW make a big deal of in the Broken Realm storyline? For me personally, Gordrak, more than anything. I want, I want um, we're going to move into that actually now because it's the next topic, but Broken Realm's Teclas. It was previewed in a little video that we watched yesterday during While You're Reforging. But uh, this is a, kind of like some of the best information we have about it. Oh, you know what? I just realized I have not been reading the text here and I apologize. Uh, the fox guy, this fox like demigod empowered by the wind spirit of Hish, just in case he thought Teclas had peaked with mountains. Oh my god, that's savage. Savage puns. Um, Archmage Teclas is also the cover star for the next book in the thrilling Broken Realms saga. The narrative sees the Lumineth Realm Lords taking the fight to Nagash, and after the epic clash, the mortal realms will never be the same again. Can the purest light of the Lumineth break the dark curse of death? So we see this incredibly beautiful book. Um, I love the fact that they are changing the binding colors. If you don't, I mean, it's just a little thing, but they're going to look amazing on the shelf of just the the red of Marathi, now the teal of Teclas. I want there to be a green for Gordrak. That's what I want. <laughs> um, let's see. Alongside with new background that will forever change the mortal realms, we'll talk about my theories in a second, the book will feature War Scroll Battalions for the Lumineth Realm Lords. Cities of Sigmar, Maggotkin of Nurgle, Flesh Eater Quartz, and Ossiarch Bone Reapers. Um, there are also war scrolls for a swath of new Lumineth Realm Lords units, including some we saw the Kangaroo Riders we saw earlier in the week, and unique battle plans that you play out some of the battles from the narrative yourself. Um, of course, Teclas isn't going to have everything his own way. Marathi will see to that. After claiming to have achieved apotheosis during the opening gambit of the Broken Realm saga, she's ready to unleash her forces in a fresh assault upon the mortal realms. What, ba what better way is there to begin such a campaign than with a new battle tome? And we'll get to that in a hot second. But let's talk Broken Realms Techlist, my friends. Um, first of all, if you, in case you, I, I read it too fast, the core idea is that either immediately after or while the things in Broken Marathi are going on, Teclas is making his own little power play against Nagash. He's seeing the devastation that the Necroquake has caused. And he's like, we need to fix this. Now, that's a noble idea of like, you know, hey, the great Necromancer, put a plan in motion that fundamentally broke uh, the way that the magic functions and as magic gods, both of death and light, this matters a whole lot to them. So Teclas decides I'm going to fix this. I'm going to put Nagash in his place, probably try, I'd imagine, ideally, to either contain or, I don't know, heal the way death magic is working in Shai-ish. Um, so that's all noble, but the problem is, is that it's Teclas. And if you know Teclas, um, his his idea is like, he has the, tends to have these very lofty goals of like, I'm gonna fix this huge problem that no, like it is just insurmountable to anybody else's minds. But the way he's going to do that is basically being a dick to everybody along the way. Like he has the sight and knows what to do and what needs to happen to fix some of the biggest problems in the mortal realms. But that that grandiose vision blinds him to more of the present or how his actions make other people feel and, and that kind of stuff. So he comes off as very callous and arrogant and he is he technically knows what needs to be done but and he's willing to do it when no one else is but it doesn't mean he's a good guy right you can do bad things uh, i mean honestly it's a great comparison because nagash was the exact same way hey we want to get rid of chaos here's what we do i got a plan i know exactly what needs to happen we kill everybody so there's no more emotions going into the chaos realm raise them all as undead and then just bleed out the chaos gods like that it is technically a great plan <laughs> it doesn't mean he's not a dick and uh, when you get these two kind of ideological forces together, man, I'm excited for that. Like that makes me so excited to learn more about the faction. So yeah, I'm gonna pause here. 
uh, before we move on, because there's some every every one of these things is is big and noteworthy. Uh, tell me your thoughts on Broken Realms Techless. And somebody asked why are Magakin of Nurgle in there. I'm gonna do my best to explain while you guys are sending in your thoughts. But obviously, Techless is coming in with Illumina Realm Lords, so that's a pretty obvious one as to why that's there. There are Cities of Sigmar in um, in Shaiish. I'd love it if we got rules for Glim's Forge, which was the main city that was used for Soul Wars by Josh Reynolds, my, one of my favorite books that I mention a lot. Um, so that one makes sense to me. Magakin of Nurgle is an interesting one because the the number one story I can think of that includes Nurgle in Shaiish is uh, Nagash Undying King, which is I've said a billion times too much, is my favorite Black Library book. But in there, it does show that there is actually quite a massive Nurgle infestation, if you will, in Shaiish. And so I'm not sure if that's what they're going to lean into. I'd love it if they brought in some of those characters because I believe, someone correct me if I'm wrong, was that the book that had the Order of the Fly? I know that they, I don't know if it was specifically that name, but they did have a knightly feel to them. I can't remember if that was the name though. So... That could be a really cool thing for Magakin of Nurgle, for sure, is this very, like, um, noble knightly order type thing. As far as the Flesh Eater Quartz go, that could be, potentially, a, a fight that is written off as, like, a small little, uh, you know, incursion. Thank you, Baylor Corvette. Yes, it was. Okay. Um, it could be a small little incursion that was that's written off, or it could be a really awesome scene where the god of illumination reveals to the flesh eater courts exactly what they are, at least for a brief moment, right? I think that would be really cool. Order of Flies in Girion. Okay, I might be wrong about that, but if you read Nagash and Nine King, they are Maggotkin and they are kind of a knightly order, so forget the Order of the Fly, but you know what I mean. That it's the same concept. Um, but yeah, that's incredible. Uh, Flesh Eater Courts having a, a faction which is defined by def not confusion necessarily or just that, but by delusion. And then that coming up against illumination as like a, a thought experiment sounds really cool. So I'm, I'm down for that. And the last one here are the Ossiarch Bone Reapers, which honestly, um, Tough Fudge just asked the right question here. Do you think Catacross will be involved or still in the all points? My gut reaction is he's still in the all points, and this is probably some really cool ways to play the army without him. That would kind of be my thought process. Anyway, um, we want to see some Broken Realms Go Trek, Croak, Nagash. I like all of these. I love it. I love it. Glimpse Forge, Leth oh, I forgot about Lethus. You're correct, Adam. You're right, man. Adam, schooling me. I forgot about Lethus. Because Lethus got its tail kicked in during uh, Forbidden Power. I mean, I don't know if the guys, do you guys have this problem. I cannot keep all these like supplements straight in my head. I get the names all mixed up. <laughs> uh, so, Doug. It's going to be Teclis's boys fighting Nagash's boys. Then Magakin show up and they do a Hobbit Battle of the Five Armies style alliance. No, that's not really what I'm thinking. I'm more thinking... Um, I guess what I was really thinking was that the story can take a few different directions where like maybe Teclis sees that Nagash's forces are already fighting the Magakin. Like that could be its own separate chapter. And then he decides to attack from a different direction. So, like, there's no at no point do they team up to fight the Maggotkin, but uh, they just enter this bloody three three man circle where everybody's just punching each other to death. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I that's what I would imagine. Uh, and as they did point out in the stream, Eltharian, who's the the mystical warrior who doesn't have a body he's just armor that floats around magically was killed by archon the black he was turned to dust in that manner so maybe there will be some uh comeuppance for doing that to him between archon the black and uh elarian eltharian sorry and now we're gonna move into <laughs> broken realms horticulous oh my god i'd be so on board with that that would be the funniest book ever just just like several chapters of him moving on his slug just like just kind of being crotchety. 
Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm just making sure I didn't miss anything. That people were responding to the thing I said. Okay, no. Broken Rum Slombo. Oh, you win, Joe. That's a that's a throwback. <laughs> um, next we have Order Battle Tome Daughters of Cain. They're getting another one, and I think they're already off to a great start simply by not having the Witch Elf be the front and center thing, because. Um, I want to see more snake ladies and the statue of Cain get kind of reconfigured. I do like him, but I want maybe if there was like battalion abilities or something that like made for at least one turn him auto awaken rather than having to do a prayer or something like that. There was just more versatility to him. I think that would go a long way. Um, ideally, I don't know if it's going to happen, but ideally I'd love to see some release that makes this easier to get into as a faction. I don't know what that would be like. Uh, their star collecting box is, it's just everything is wrapped up in that cauldron kit. I think it was just a bad move, but that is my own opinion. Uh, let's see. Dars of Cain are still part of order. Yay! See, capturing Free City and torturing Stormcast Eternals is not yet good reason to get kicked out. Exactly, yep. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, uh, Sigmar's quite lenient. Here, give me one second to step away. Sorry about that. It's just something fell on the shelf behind me and then everything just kind of started sliding with it. <laughs> so I was like, I gotta go nip that in the bud. Um, yeah, I think, I think that could be a really cool idea. So eight heroes in Curse City. Okay, I'll check out that website in just a hot second here. But thank you. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to open up to the chat here. Uh, what, if you're a Daughters of Cain player or you play against them frequently, what are you excited about? Because if we scroll down just a hint more, they are getting endless spells. And I'll be honest with you, with a faction that is not in dire need of new models... I'm perfectly happy with just a book and something like a terrain piece or the endless spells. You know, you walk in, you maybe drop a hundred bucks US between the kits and the book and that kind of stuff, uh, depending on your taxes. And like, your army gets something cool. Like, I like that. Obviously, for some factions like Skaven, we wanted a bit more. But I think if your model line is in a good place, this is a great release. Daughters of Cain players should be happy. Hopefully... Hopefully it incentivizes you to do anything else besides just take a thousand, you know, witch elves or whatever, but whatever. Um, let's see. Super hype for the rebalancing. Yep, absolutely. We're getting there. Uh, Philip hyped for this. Okay, so we're going to move on to the Crimson Court, which I won't play the video, but I will go through these pictures slide by slide. Night Hunt, are we a joke? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. I want the Night Hunt to get a new book so freaking bad, you have no idea. So here we have the um, Soul Blight Warband from Warhammer Underworlds. And I'm going to say this. Um, I, for one, was very excited about the possibility of getting a glimpse into the full Soul Blight release. And they didn't. And at the end of the preview, I was extremely disappointed. Okay, because I, I didn't get to see it. But then I had this thought. I was like, the only reason that I know it's coming as a full faction is because someone leaked a photograph of them, of uh, one of these, not these characters, but a Soul Blight Lord in their box. So it's like they weren't ready at all to show us the full faction stuff. And so I do not begrudge them for giving in and doing it. They already did it with Illumineth. So I'm just going to say... It's fine. Like, it's fine. They weren't ready. And you know what? If they're not ready, all we're going to do is just, just get mad about stuff that's not here if, if we demand stuff too early. Especially in COVID times when production and shipping already take extra time anyway. So, I'm just throwing that out there. We're not going to complain about the lack of Soul Blight as an army because we got some freaking killer models. So, these are a Warhammer Underworlds Warband. Um, and I made the joke in a chat. I was just like, 
so nice of them to put all the, so the vampire heroes we've ever wanted in one box but i'm not really sure what all these underworlds cards are for and it was just a little jest because it's like if you have any interest in vampires this is just a four part character set i absolutely love it um Brandon said, well, every Underworld's Warband will get a book. Karnathi was in Ophalkarn? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. It's a box full of vampire lords. Exactly. But there are interesting things about them. So for one, this, if correct me if I'm wrong, this is the Vlad von Karstein pose. Essentially, I think he's on more of a hero rock than the other one was. Even though it's not him, he has his own name. There's no recognizable named characters. Absolutely love this guy. Um, this lady we've already seen before. I I'm in love. <laughs> um, this one, it just, it's perfect. Like to me, if you're talking like if, if let's say hypothetically, um, Wolfkarn is the Warhammer quest setting. Okay. I'm getting there in a hot second. Let's say, um, I wanted to build a vampire army, right? They come out with a, uh, a battle line unit that I really, really love and that kind of stuff. Um, this is the kind of vampire leader I personally would want. One where they stand very proud, in a sense, a power sto stance, but they're not necessarily like ready to fight because they don't want to. They want to have their thralls take care of it because they got bigger stuff going on. I like that quite a bit, um, and I love the weapon he's wielding. That he just, it looks like the moment he gets into action, I can like visually see him swinging that thing way faster than a mortal should right or like anyone his size should and that's kind of a concept that's come up quite a bit with some of the black library books as it comes to um like nurgle stuff when people are fighting great and clean ones they're like oh he's way faster than than you'd think it's kind of a mind-bending thing i could see that being exactly the same here where you might look at this and be like oh yeah he's gonna do slow wide arc sweeps and it's like no i think he's gonna get into the thick of it and crush stuff absolutely love the the it's not really a shoulder pauldron it goes from his chest but these horns so it looks like i don't know between the horns coming up on either side and the teeth that come up from his belt line it looks like his stomach is the maw of a dragon it's like oh this is so cool anyway this is my pick mace guy also because he looks like he's kind of just running out the clock right i mean at a certain point he looks like someone outside of a ren fair waiting for the bus and um you know i've been there <laughs> and then there's this guy who he is also a vampire lord at first uh when they first showed the pictures i thought he was smaller than the other ones and so i thought oh maybe this is our thrall unit it's just like little man bats uh but no he is a vampire lord this is pretty much what the vampire lord with uh wings is going to be like and I like it. Um, the idea that he has basically let himself go hungry for so long, his body begins to change and morph, and he's somewhere between a, a, a traditional vampire like the other ones here and a Vargolf, which is ultimately what he'll become if he keeps starving himself. Now, I do like... Um, he's on his last huzzah of the day. <laughs> I like that. Uh, what I, I like about this, um, because I do have an interest in Underworlds, I really do. My pre-order got totally botched, they never shipped it, and so I just cancelled it. So I'm trying to find it locally, but, uh, I do want to get into Underworlds with, um, Diarchasm. I'm sorry, I don't know why that, that word just skipped my brain for a second. And so I'm looking at this, I'm like, okay, um, what do they do mechanically? right in terms of the game and they did talk about that a bit so if you are interested in underworlds uh one of the mechanics they're going to introduce for these guys is hunger um oh thank you goat force yeah one is hunger so that essentially they have to do things to keep satisfying their hunger i'm assuming play aggressively attack other units that kind of stuff or there's ability cards that they can do uh where if they don't keep satiated with blood and that kind of stuff, they actually take, uh, there's some downsides. And they didn't really go into a whole lot of detail of what those downsides were. Um, I assume it could be a modifier to a stat or a wound or something like that, but they need to stay fed. And that's an interesting concept in that game because Underworlds right now, 
um, you know, in terms of like how you choose your objectives, you can make a very aggressive or defensive army, but it do, it will lock you in a smidge if not only the objective cards you pick, but also the warband you take has extreme pros and cons that push you in a direction, right? Like one could say that the objective stuff for corn is all about killing and bloodshed and all that kind of stuff. And you're right, but technically nothing says you have to play that way, right? You could just go sitting on an objective with your corn bloodhound just sitting there chilling, you know, nothing says you can't. Whereas with these guys, mechanically, they will get worse at doing that if they're not actively feeding or engaging in some way. So that's an interesting concept um, that I really, really like. So, and like I said at the beginning, if nothing else, um, this is going to be the most amazing hero pack value that I've ever seen from Games Workshop where you get four distinct vampire lord hero models for what is probably going to be about 40 bucks um killer killer oh my gosh like even if you're just not into vampires there's so many things that these could be people have been talking about one dark eldar absolutely this could be a scourge king that would be incredible um you have what's the other ones um a blood knight on foot if you're going to build a custom hero from the anvil of apotheosis Nope, not a new Vlad Joe, but it is a very similar remake of his model. Uh, let's see. Order of the Fly turned up in the eight points alongside for a tourney. Interesting. So yeah, um, lots of cool stuff here. Oh yeah, a Chaos uh, Slave to Darkness Lord. Absolutely, these would be great for that. So I love it. Um, like I said, I'm not... Once I took a moment to to chill out i was like i'm not upset about the soul blight release or the lack thereof this is incredible it shows us the vision they have uh for the vampires in the future uh let's see and the last thing the thing that i'm most excited about honestly and the chat has probably been dying for because i've seen it come up a few times is warhammer quest cursed city so if you're familiar warhammer quest silver tower came out and um, people people liked it. it. I don't think it sold quite as well as they wanted. Uh, in that game, you had a couple heroes, and then you had a whole bunch of Zinchian things. Now, what's interesting about the Zinchian things that I'm going to bring up later is that we did not have, uh, to my understanding, we did not have the um, Disciples of Zinch battle tome at that point so it was our first time seeing zangors and some of the things that they were going to do with the ogroid thalmaturge and that kind of stuff um and then that book dropped and we got a fuller picture what i expect to happen is that in warhammer quest curse city something very similar is going to happen where um we're going to see new vampire units uh, they have a, a few for us to see here and then um, once the game is like ready to be fully revealed, we'll see, uh, we'll see like the full line for what the soul blight have coming and not the full line, obviously, but like, you know, some of the battle line units, some of the little dudes, uh, who they'll be fighting. So I think that that is very exciting. So stay tuned for cursed city news, but what is it? Okay. Let's read the little blurb here. Speaking of vampires, an epic new Warhammer Quest game brings even more bloodsuckers to the mortal realms. If you and your friends already uh, have defeated the Silver Tower and the Blackstone Fortress, you'll find an exciting challenge ahead as you embark on the most dangerous quest yet, into the cursed city of Ulfenkarn. Now, let's pause there. One, I found it interesting that they did not mention Quest uh, Shadows Over Hammer Hall at all. <laughs> Just throwing that one out there. Um... But the reason I think they didn't is very simple because I asked this in the Twitch stream and they sort of answered it in a strange way where I believe this is not... So if you don't know, Warhammer Quest Silver Tower was a cooperative game where you and your team are exploring a dungeon. Warhammer Quest Shadow Over Hammer Hall is, a, is very similar but with the important distinction that you needed a game master. Like it was almost like a D&D experience, um, not in terms of like the character creation by any means, but I mean in terms of like having a, a centralized person dictate rules, come up with enemies and, and that kind of stuff. Like you just, you just needed a game master. 
And so I asked the question, is this going to be like Silver Tower or like under um, Shadows Over Hammer Hall? And um, they kept likening it to Silver Tower and Blackstone Fortress, which were games that did not require that. So I am fairly confident in saying this is not going to be a GM driven game. I'm sure that does not mean that there's no way to include a GM, but at its base, it is not. So that's my thought. Um, let's see. We'll move down here. With a revised and refined rule system and models that you've dream you've never dreamed of, uh, we're going to stick our necks out. Usually not a good idea in Olfenkarn and say that the new Warhammer Quest might be the best game in a box that fine folks at Warhammer Studio have ever created. Um, we can't just leave you hanging like that though. Of course not, here are a couple of those incredible new models. The Vampire Hunter, Jel Jelson, Derek and the villainous Gore Slab the Gravekeeper. So we're going to open these pictures separately and take a look at them. So, can it be played by one player? They have not confirmed that or yeah, I did ask that. Um, but to my knowledge, they did not. I believe Silver Tower, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I believe you could play it as a two player game because you would just take multiple heroes. I don't remember about a one hero. So, interesting. But we have this guy, who is the walking embodiment of Warhammer Big Dick Energy. <laughs> I don't know how else to word it. He, um, he comes strutting in with immaculate looking armor. He's got a hat that, I don't know, it's tall enough to be a compass point for everybody in the mortal realms. And there's nothing more Warhammer about it. And I'm here for every inch of them. <laughs> um, I absolutely love this guy. As you can see, uh, he is decked to the nines with weapons. He's in here ready to hunt some vampires. Uh, someone alluded, yeah, Steven said Saltspire. That's the character from um, Vermintide 2. I'm definitely, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably just going to be playing Vermintide 2 as the uh, <laughs> Inquisitor guy for the rest of the night. Not really. I got stuff to do, but his armament, you can see here, he has a uh, free guild rifle, but under slung attached to that is a stake launcher. Um, so it is it's technically a two barrel weapon. I mean, that's that's the noob tube right there for uh, any vampire hunter. But he also has a regular gun. And uh, going down the side here, he has uh, what I'm assuming is probably gonna be a blessed dagger right here on his front back. And then on his back, he has the actual full claymore. And I love the way, if you look at this on the top right, just the way that they included the claymore kind of going in and through the rough sack that he has. Like, I just really like that. I don't know why. Rather than just having it be like a, a strange bolted on thing that you just glue straight to his back, having it go through some fabrics that ruffle, I think was a really nice touch. Like, I think that is the, the icing on top when it comes to a good model. Now, on both sides of him, left and right, he is covered in huge stakes, which he can either load into his noob tube or he can just take out by hand and hammer it with a hammer in his side hand. So that, I mean, there's no part of this model that is not exceedingly awesome. I could also see him being really cool if the uh, ability existed to head swap and you could put like a bald head or there or something like that. I mean, just anything or literally any of the heads from the Devoted of Sigmar kit would look so freaking cool. Can you imagine the guy who has like burning hot coals on his head um, on this body? Oh, he would just look rad. It would be so dark. Oh, I love it. Um, other minor details that like speak to me personally. I love the uh, the armor plates on his on his legs, but then also like the armor outside of the trench coat, I think looks cool. I gotta just like that. It looks, I don't know. <laughs> uh, every inch, Doug, oh my. <laughs> uh, he would be great in a Sister of Battle Inquisitor, absolutely, and there was people talking about that. Honestly, you don't even really need to change anything. Like if you really want it to be 40K, you just drop the spikes. Um, and in that gap, you can put like, you know, a. Uh, textbook like a, almost like a bible type thing that the inquisition sometimes carries um that kind of stuff would be awesome so yeah 
How about how the stakes are from Akshi, so they burn? Yeah, did he say that? Uh, maybe he did say that personally. I'm going to open up the uh, quest website. So, that is Jelson Borok. Jelson Darok, sorry. And now we're going to look at Gorslav the Gravekeeper. This is exactly what I want to see. Okay, now if I couldn't get this full Soul Blight Army release that I, I kind of hoped for, this is the next best thing because this tells me, okay, first of all, not everyone is just a, a vampire lord walking around in this season's latest fashion, but there are these kind of like grotesque, somewhere between dead and undead thrall type things. Like I wanted an infantry unit to replace zombies, but that look like this in some respect. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm thinking this is a low-level hero in AOS. Um, that kind of, you know, he could be, he could act as a priest, could act as a magician. It doesn't really matter. I don't really care. What I care about is the fact that like they've really nailed the aesthetic as far as the skin goes. Far outdoes anything that any of the zombie kits do today. Uh, and just the little details of like little severed parts on him. He's got a weird amount of weapons. The spade is my favorite. The spade and the headdress are just like, it screams Silent Hill, which is my favorite, actually my favorite horror movie. Um, I know it's not, it's a, it's horror with a lowercase h, <laughs> but um, in terms of visual design, that kind of stuff, video game series and movies, I love Silent Hill. I'm an absolute nerd for it. So this really does speak to me on that level where you have this weird, this weird mix of, um, obviously creepy and deranged right he, he this man does not look well <laughs> right we, i think we can pretty much say that but more than that it's taking very reasonable things that somebody would have and then dark fantasying them to oblivion so for example his weapon it's a giant spade he's a grave digger either to dig up bodies to add to units which again if we're talking about a low level hero that interacts in a soul blight army I could absolutely see him being a guy kind of like the soul render for Deepkin who just adds a thrall here and there uh, as he's digging up graves. But like that weapon as both a tool and an instrument to make you scared, you know, practical meets, you know, intimidating, I love. That to me is probably the absolute best. Now, someone did point out um, that he looks like the Speaker of Sauron. If you have not seen that guy, he, he does in terms of Everything from his mouth up is covered in a weird, you know, helmet that goes way too high. But, um, absolutely. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I'm here for every minute of it. Uh, let's see. He kind of looks like the new killer for Dead by Daylight. I've not played that one or seen anything from it, but I've, the name's popped up a few times on my, um, on my, uh, in f Facebook feed. But yeah, that, that detail and obviously the hangman's noose, I just... I'm in love with him. <laughs> uh, some speculation on the other hero characters visible at the end of the trailer. Let's go check a look. Turn this on. Turn that off. Okay. So, yes. Yeah, so we have... These are the heroes, I'm assuming, that are going to be a part of our Warhammer Quest adventure. So let's take a look here. We have, obviously, our, our Witch Hunter. We've already talked about him. Um, this could be... Uh, what, a Wanderer Prince, something like that, uh, or perhaps some evolution of the Karnathi. I'd really like that. Uh, over here to the left, I'm definitely going to say that looks, I mean, if it's not a carriage and Overlord's character, it's very reminiscent of their technology, just just literally the gun. It, it has the big spike thrower gun. Um, absolutely. So I'm, I'm down with that one. So there's either... It's either a KO or some technology, you know, brought in that kind of stuff. So, uh, and then over here on the far right, uh, someone in the chat said it could be an orc. It could be an orc. Absolutely. Uh, I'm trying to think of other, I don't know. It's, it's the shoulder pad that gets me to think it's not an orc just because it's this like perfect face sculpt. It could be like, um, I mean, even in 40k, with as, as tough as the Inquisition is, they do use mutants. So it could be just a larger humanoid, someone from Chaman that was like, you know, part of like drilling and mining. 
it can be a lot of things. It's just the face looks too clean and distinct and non orky for me to think that it's a uh, green skin. Iron Golem Ogre Breacher, that would be so cool. <laughs> you think it's an ogre? An ogre that works with order? That could definitely be. I mean, honestly, it would be a great way to, to put in a new, um, like a man-eater sculpt. Uh, oh, that's so funny because Brandon just said that in the chat. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be a fantastic way to introduce that, especially if they wanted to start, you know, over time kind of moving away from the uh, the fine cast uh, style stuff. So, um, yeah, you know, I mean, give me, give me all the Karnathi, give me all the ogres. I don't know. Uh, Captain says, Doug, missed you. Been out of sync with your stream since Christmas. Aw, oh, buddy. Well, I'm glad you got here. So I'm going to pause there just for a smidge. We're going to go check out their website because um, they actually did make an Age of Sigmar Cursed City website. So I'm going to pause there. Y'all throw your thoughts out. So uh, kind of as a sum up here while you guys are doing that uh, is I believe that the villains in the Cursed City set are going to be the precursors or at least alternate sculpts for some of whatever the full soul blight line is going to be because they weren't ready to show it today but we know it exists it's because they have a battle tome name and everything like that off the packaging of the vampire we did see leaked so i think it's a safe bet to say warhammer quest curse city is going to be a good glimpse into what they have planned for soul blight as a faction as well as hopefully be just a standalone kick-ass game um my mind immediately jumped to the idea of doing this live on the channel with people because I was already looking to do some form of like Soulbound, which I still want to do. Uh, but having something like Warhammer Quest Curse City where there's an established rule set, um, people can reference it very easily. You know, it's easy to buy. I can get all the characters that I'll need in one sitting and then play this. Basically, I'll, I'll play it and then people can interact and like, you know, tell me what they want their character to do. So, yeah. Please, Cursed City version of Mordheim. Uh, yeah, I don't know why you couldn't. <laughs> uh, let's see. The Crimson Court might also... Yeah, absolutely, of course. I'm more meant for the Thralls and the lower guys. We know we have a good... We have a good feeling of what the Vampire Lord heroes specifically are going to be. But not so much like the Thralls beneath them, that kind of thing. Um, hello, what did I miss? Uh, you missed quite a bit, buddy. <laughs> I would say either stick around. We're kind of just rounding it out here. Um, go ahead and stick it out or uh, go check it out at the uh, beginning and, and you can get caught up uh, from there. So um, let's see. Curse City. So I, uh, I'm going to subscribe later. Let me do that. I don't have to be throwing my email out everywhere. Uh, let's see. Get the chat pulled back up. Welcome to Ulfenkarn. Located in the heart of Shyish, Ulfenkarn can trace its history back to the Age of Myth. A mighty citadel was constructed by three noble dynasties of Azurite descendant, uh, descent, and for many generations, the living and the spirits of the land lived together peacefully. That's one paragraph. I want to know everything about that, because um, any time in Shyish where they have the dead and the living coexisting... I find deeply fascinating. I can't get over that concept. I think it would be incredible. It has so much implication for their worldview and their their views on death and life and that kind of stuff. I just I just want to fall into a whole book series about that interaction. Uh, next paragraph. The city bred a tough people whose strength would be sorely tested during the Age of Chaos. As the Dark Gods poured their hateful legions into reality, the city found itself isolated and was laid waste by the slon well one second sound itself isolated and was laid waste by slon the ravener the only chance to survive was to agree to a pact with a potential savior a pact that the city would regret forever now this is something we can actually read about if you are curious um neferata what is it oh, man it's not mortark of bone dominion of bone i believe um there was a corn faction that enters her area and uh, Neferata is trying to basically combat that threat. Now, what we're seeing in this situation is, I'm assuming Slon the Ravener is probably a Chaos Champion of some kind. I, you know, it sounds very corny, but whatever. 
Um, and these people in desperation pledge themselves to what I'm assuming is a vampire lord. And they're like, this super sucks. <laughs> you just traded one evil for another. Uh, but they didn't see it that way at the time. And so I think that that is super cool. Uh, let's see what we got here. Ooh, okay. So we have Agents of Defiance, but there are quite a few more than the four that are in that picture thing. So that's cool. I'll be checking back here pretty regularly. Uh, so let's learn about Jelson Derrick. Jelson Derrick is a one-man death squad with a merciless streak, uh, with a merciless streak a mile wide. So let's just, guys, if you have to earn something to be written on your tombstone in the Warhammer universe, I think that's that's pretty good. <laughs> Um, absolutely. So, uh, let's see. He was once part of the Order of Azir, a well-known and fearsome hunter of witches, ethergeists, and cultists of the Dark Gods, though his conduct saw him expelled. The exact reason remains a guarded secret. That's incredible. So he's, he's sort of like a rejected inquisitor. He's not an inquisitor because he's no longer affiliated with the church, but that's massive. I like that quite a bit. Let's go check out... Gorslav the Gravekeeper. I love the Russian-esque names on these guys. Uh, this gaunt and towering creature tends the crypts and charnel pits, pits sorry, of the Ulfenkarn corpse gardens. Silently, he toils away in his unhallowed domain, ignoring the screaming terror of his victims as he buries them alive beneath mounds of grave soil. So yeah, I, I could definitely see that being a character who... Um, you know, adds zombie units to an area, that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. Amazing release. I'm very excited to see you cover the lore once they come out. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Please don't reanimate. <laughs> it would be mine. Oh, that'd be great. Please don't reanimate. I'm not sure how well Nagash responds to please, but um, sure. <laughs> uh, what an edgelord character description. <laughs> Uh, Doug, what do you think Warcry War? What do you think a Warcry War band would look like for both the goods and the baddies? Well, we have the we have the baddies. Uh, we already have a, a Soul Blight um, War band for you, buddy. Let's see. What's interesting is that there were eight hero options, and there are five unit types as the enemies. And that might sound odd at first, but if you think about, you know, I kind of alluded to earlier. I think that this might mimic the silver tower thing where we got zinch models before the zinch book so in that sense you had you know you only needed uh, a picture of like a single zangor and a single you know acolyte and the ogroid thaumaturs like it, there wasn't actually in terms of unit diversity a ton going on but you got a lot of them and then you had a lot more heroes who were trying to have different abilities and quest in that city so i do think um I do think there's quite a bit going. So uh, we're going to go down here to where it says explore the city. And I'm just going to say, I don't want to speak out of turn, but this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> Apologies. I'm <coughs> fighting off a cold. Okay. So here's the deal. I love the fact that they gave us a pseudo map right we're like i'm assuming in the bottom center these are this is a graveyard i'm curious as to how much freedom adventurers have in choosing their route um we have sky docks i love it so there could be some ko i mean it's still a functioning city they just hate their lives so it is what it is the geist gale no one dares venture near this gate except the spectral dead um hangman's is it cops? Copes? This is the bat-infested site of a former Sylvaneth embassy. <laughs> they got wrecked. Uh, the Clot. This canal is now clogged by dried gore and is home to many carrion horrors. The Corpse Gardens. Gorslav Gravekeeper oversees these frightful charnel pits and graveyards. And then these shadowed crypt halls. Haunting music and screams echo from within these vaults. And there are more, there's four more locations marked, but they're they're holding those cards close to the chest. They haven't revealed those kinds of things yet. So I think that is really cool. What this allows, just this picture alone, 
is great for the kind of setting that I think they're going for in terms of like, you know, you're exploring a city, hopefully, um, giving some context as to where you might be. I think that's really nice. Um, in fact, it's one of the hardest things to give visuals to other players and that kind of stuff. And so I think this is great. Uh, let's see. Um, borderline overwhelming. The hype they're building is tangible. I agree. I'm very excited. Now, um, there's a lot of folks who were saying like, oh, this is crappy because we don't actually see the, the full line of Soul Blight stuff. It's like, you know, they weren't ready to show it. And um, if we forget that that leak dropped and we just had this, this would be so exciting. Like, you know what I mean? It, it is. It is exciting. I'm drooling over here. But yeah. Um, Levi said, if you had to guess, what type of mid to small monster units will we see from the vampires other than Blood Knights? Who? <clears throat> I'd probably say I could see like an elite unit of maybe like three monsters, kind of like Bulgore or something like that, um, where they're like between vampires and Vargolfs, like more so than the guy who comes in the Underworld Warband where they, they've become feral. I could see that. That would be really cool. Uh, what else? Yeah, I don't know. I do not know. Um... Okay, there's Gorslav, so we can assume there's other enemy leaders. Absolutely. Yeah, in the beginning of the video, there's <clears throat> a guy sitting on the throne, and Gorslav's off to his right, but then there's also a lady to his left, and, and him himself. So I don't, you know, we don't have a lot of detail, but what we do know shows us there's going to be a lot on the way. Uh, let's see. I think the four guys around the picture are going to be the the overlords with the fifth guy being the one in the trailer that could definitely be yeah they presented themselves as these noble knights and then they took over the city and it all went to hell so absolutely i am loving it so um let's see i'm gonna go ahead and open it up give me your your final thoughts because that's the end of the preview it was a huge one go ahead and let me know your thoughts i'm gonna leave the picture here but uh one thing i do want to say before i go is if you wouldn't mind and if you like this kind of video, uh, click subscribe. And we're going to be doing a, uh, a raffle this coming week. I, I mentioned this at the beginning of the stream. Uh, this whole thing was brought to us by Tinker Turf, Awesome company that uh, essentially is making all kinds of really cool terrain for Kill Team and Infinity and 40K and all kinds. Of, I mean, it's more sci-fi oriented. But um, I absolutely love it. And so if you want to support the channel... And, you know, you're not one of those people who likes Patreon or whatever like that. You don't, don't care for that. That's totally fine. You can support me by supporting these guys. Their Kickstarter is in the description below. Um, and they, they're an established business. They're just doing a Kickstarter for the next round of designs. But they've had two successful Kickstarters so far. And they're awesome people. And they are a self-sustaining business. So it's not like, you know, the uh, Kickstarters who burn out very quickly. And that's why I decided to uh, to help them out by giving them a little blast this week. I'm going to be like, hey guys, there are awesome uh, companies that make our hobby possible. And please support them if you have an extra two pennies to scratch together. <laughs> uh, and so, yeah, let's do this. Let's see. This point, we didn't get Skaven 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Made my weekend amazing already. Thank you for your time. Aw, thank you so much. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff to look forward to. Um, very, very excited. I came in late, but I heard elsewhere this is coming in April. I've not heard a single thing about that. They were very dodgy when it came to timelines. Uh, and I think for a good reason, because everything that's going on in the world kind of messes with shipping and production. So, all right, friends, I'm going to go ahead and hop off. Uh, let's see. Adam, does that company make fantasy terrain too? Not yet, uh, but I, I believe it might be part of their future plans. What I can say uh, is that some of the, the wrecked and worn stuff, honestly, like you could build a very reasonable carriage and overlord skyport or shipping yard out of some of this stuff. It just looks rustic and like cool looking. I don't know. So anyway, uh, Warhammer or just GW? I don't know what you mean by that. I'm sorry. Warhammer or just GW? Uh, 
I'm not sure what that question means. <laughs> okay, friends, I'm going to go ahead and hop off uh, for the day. Y'all have yourselves a wonderful afternoon. Uh, go ahead and uh, get ready for an exciting week of content because we've got a lot to talk about. There's a lot of stuff going on in the Mortal Realms. So anyway, I will catch you all later. Happy Wargaming.